Okay, time to prepare the S-Corp tax returns. What are the documents that we need? Number one, we need the balance sheet and profit and loss. Make sure they are reconciled with the bank statement and that you get the statements that are up to date. If you are the, the accountant, uh, you can ask them for uh, accountant permission to their books so that way you can just go into the, their software and be able to pull up their statements without them having to uh, print them out for you. Number two, last year tax return. This is this return is important if it's your new client because when we are presenting the current balance sheet, the last year tax returns will have the beginning balance sheet numbers. We want to make sure they're tied and that they flow through correctly. Number three, or sales, sales tax returns. So throughout the year, um, if I'm sorry, if this client sells products, they must have filed sales tax return throughout the year, either quarterly, yearly, or monthly. This is important because in these tax returns, they're showing how much their gross is on the sale of their product. So this gross number needs to match or be less than what you're showing on your profiting loss. Um, it could be less because in this business, they might have one part of the business that where they sell products and the other part where they sell services. So the services, of course, we don't charge um, sales tax, but make sure they are presenting this to you so you are matching the gross numbers from the sales tax return to the profit and loss. Okay, number four, W-2 and W-3s. So as a S corp tax return, you should be, or they should be writing, uh, paying their officer a salary. Also, if they have employees, they should be paying them through a W-2. This W-2 and W-3 will show that the amounts that they were paid to the salaries and to the employees. And we want to differentiate it in the tax return. There's a line for officer compensation and there's a line for employees. We want to have them um, separated and um, tie the tax return to match the W-2s that was reported at the end of the year. So that's what we need, those, those forms. And now number five, the state tax payment. So the IRS lets you deduct the state tax payment on your federal tax return. But when you go and do the state tax return, they will not let you deduct it. So that's why we need this number because then we will add it back on our state tax return. Um, again, this is for the state tax purposes. I will show you whether um, that is for California. Next. Balance sheet, profit and loss, and last year tax returns are the three items we need to get started on the tax return. In the balance sheet, we have retained earnings. Retained earnings are the most important number to get started on this tax return. Retained earnings are accumulated profits that the corporation earn throughout the years, minus any distributions that the owners took out. The first thing you do when you prepare an escort tax return is to match the book retain earnings with the tax return retain earnings. If they match, then yes, you have a clean tax return. That means that the beginning numbers of the balance sheet are correct and therefore you can flow them through the current tax year, the current tax return. If they don't match, then you need to review them and make some adjustments because those two numbers must match in order to start the tax return. Let me show you what they look like. So here's the balance sheet for 2019. We're going to work on the tax return for 2019. The balance sheet that the client gave us has the retained earnings, which is the beginning retained earnings of negative 131.78. Now, if we request their last year tax return, which will be 2018, these are the beginning and ending numbers 
of that year. So the big, the end numbers, the end tax year will be the 132. So their ending number will be our beginning number on our books. And that's what we need to match. Last year tax return, look, we look at the number retain earnings here in line 24 of the schedule L. And this number must match our balance sheet for the current year on their books. And here we have those two numbers that match. So we're ready to get started. So what if our numbers don't match? Here are two items that are typically the reason why they don't match. Last year, depreciation and accumulate depreciation. And the beginning distribution of the current year. Let me show you what this means. Depreciation and accumulated depreciation. Since depreciation is a tax item, many accountants forget to record it in their client's books after the tax return is completed. Typically, the tax return will tell the books what the tax depreciation amount is, so we can make the adjustments on their books. This error from last year will have an effect on our retained earnings for the current year. That's why it's important to get this correct. This is the entry that we will do if we forget, if they forgot to record the tax return depreciation on the books. Depreciation debit will have the amount, the amount will be in the tax return from last year. So this amount as a debit on depreciation expense, which is part of the profit and loss. And then we will credit accumulated depreciation with the same amount and this will affect our balance sheet. Make sure you enter the correct end year end, ending year, which in this case, it will be December 31st, 2018. Now, if this was this mistake was only done for 2018, this will fix it and we should have a retained earnings match. But if you notice that they have missed recording the tax depreciation on their books for many years, 16, 17, that retainers is never going to match. So in order to do that, and instead of recording depreciation on 2016, 2017, and 2018, you can just record it all in one year. So instead of doing this entry, what we'll do, we'll go direct and retain earnings. That will be the debit account, uh, amount, account, yes. And the amount will be all the tax depreciation for the previous year. So let's say in 2016, it was 10 bucks that they forgot to record. 2017, it was another 10 bucks. Then 2018, it's another 10 bucks. Then our retained earning amount will be, our debit amount will be $30. $30. And our accumulated depreciation will be the same number. Again, we want to record this on our the previous year, which is 12 31st, 2018. Distributions, or in some cases, owners pay in personal expense. Close out. We need to close this account every beginning of the year. So this is another account that is typically that typically needs to be adjusted at the beginning of each year to reflect the current distribution made rather than the accumulated distribution throughout the years. This is how we do it. We run the balance sheet report. In this case, we need access to their books to find out if they made that adjustment and the, the just the journal entry. So we request permission to the books, we run their balance sheet for the current year, and we open up distribution, make sure the beginning balance is zero. And if not, then we need to enter this journal entry. I will show you what it looks like in the next slide. But remember, we need to close out um, distributions with retained earnings, distributions credit and retained earnings at debit. The amount as the amount will be the same as the beginning balance. The date will be the beginning of the year. This is 
a different one because usually we do when we make any adjustments for previous years we have to enter last year's uh, the ending year so december 31st but in this case we're we're looking to close the beginning of um, each year and why is this important because closing distribution will show the current distribution made during the year also it will adjust retain earnings too much to find a retain earnings as last year so here's what it looks like so after we run our balance sheet we will click on distributions the amount of distributions or owners pay whichever have a number if both of them have a number then you have to do it on each of them so in this case it's owners pay and personal expense we click on that and these are the numbers that we see we see a beginning balance of 4200 and then it just keeps going there were, this number should be zero so we can take into account only the numbers that are happening this year okay so in order to do that this is a negative number because we're taking out distributions so we will our record our general entry will be the beginning of the year retain earnings will be our debit and ownership owner pays and personal expense will be our credit again this is the same number as the beginning balance so by doing this entry we will zero it out as you see here this is the result of what will look like and with this we will know what are the current distributions and this should match to your retainers with these two entries the depreciation and the close out of distribution you should be able to have your retainer needs to from your books to tie to the last last year tax return um, of course on your tax return okay so on our, on our next slide we have profit and loss sales tax return wages and state tax payment so what we want to do here is to compare the profit and loss to the sales tax return, the wages report, and the state corporate tax payment. We do this because these returns and payments were already filed with the IRS and the state. So we want to make sure that they match to what's on the, uh, on the profit and loss to prevent any questionings from the tax entities. In this case, the IRS and the state of California. Okay, so here's the sales tax return for California. A sales tax return, this is a yearly tax return, uh, the beginning period in January, ending in December. Usually they are quarterly, monthly, so make sure we have this. Uh, you see the dates. So if they're quarterly, you make sure you add all those four quarters and to, to have this gross sales number match this girl sales receipt on your tax return for the S Corp. And that's the same number should show on your profit and loss on, the, on your books because that's where you're transferring those numbers to. This is a quick comparison that would help you avoid any um, or prevent sales tax audits um, for your client. Okay, so just go for next will be wages and salary. Wages and salary. So our main goal here is to differentiate the officer compensation with uh, wages for our employees. So throughout the year, if you're running payroll, which you should if you're doing an S-Corp tax return, um, you're filing 941s for your wages that are paid. Uh, if you have officer and employees, you are getting at the end of the year or the beginning of the following year, the W-2s and W-3s, either from your software or from the client if they're running their own payroll. Make sure you collect the 941s, 940s, and also the W-2s and W-3s from them. In the W-2s, you will see um, the officer name in their wages. This number is what you want to uh, have and list on line seven. Line seven would generate a form called 1125E, which is just asking details on the, the officer, officer's name, officer's social, etc. But 
uh, in the front page of the 1120s, we want to see the same amount that's on the W-2 as their wages. I'll make sure those numbers tie. And then the second one will be our salary wages from the employees. So if they only have one employee or they have many, make sure you add them all what's on line one and that is what it, sh it's here. it should be here on line eight. Okay, so the next one is taxes and license. So whenever a corporation pays taxes, they're typically not deductible. So if this company owes taxes and they pay taxes to the IRS, they're not taxable. Only if they're, they're taxable only if they're paid to the state on the IRS tax return, but they're not deductible in the state return. So let's say this company, again, blah, blah, pay taxes to the state of sixteen hundred dollars on in twenty nineteen. It could be for twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen taxes. Uh, it doesn't matter. So they pay this on the corporate level. Then this means that we can deduct it on the state or on the IRS return, but we have to make sure we take it out on the state return. This is a California state return. We add it back and this is our new total um, profit that it will that the state will be taxes on that will taxes on okay so it and we have to make sure uh when once we run the payroll i'm sorry when we run prof the profit and loss that whenever we see taxes and license we have to ask what amount was paid for the corporate tax return for the corporate tax for the state uh, and we have to take it out put it on line 12 and that way when we do the state return uh, it adds back up some softwares do it by themselves um, if not you have to make sure you do it or you see it on the state return because you don't want the state to come back and um, ask you to you know work, put it back and once they see your return, they want to ask for other items. So this will avoid or prevent you from getting any questions from them.